Jordan is calling on US Congress to step in and halt Israel's plans to annex parts of the West Bank as a top official from the UAE has made a rare address about Israel, urging greater cooperation. An important cabinet meeting in Israel today as authorities grapple with the sharp rise in coronavirus cases, increasing by 299 in the last day, with the death toll rising to 303 people. And a dramatic border confrontation between India and China, with a number of soldiers killed as international fears mount as to how this could escalate. Hello, I'm Sarah Coates. Thanks for joining me. Well, we begin here in Israel and Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is enjoying a major rise in the polls, while the popularity of alternate Prime Minister and Defence Minister Benny Gantz is plunging as points of agreement between the two premiers are becoming increasingly hard to find. Our diplomatic correspondent Eli Hockenberg has the latest on Israel's new coalition. Trouble in paradise. Short weeks after it was up and running, Israel's governing coalition is facing some major hurdles. The so-called Norwegian law was passed in parliament overnight, but not before a fierce battle between Benjamin Netanyahu's Likud party and Benny Gantz's blue and white. The latter wanted to see the bill passed as soon as possible to let new lawmakers enter parliament to replace those lawmakers who were appointed ministers and by this increase the party's clout. But the Likud postponed the vote time and again, perhaps using it as a bargaining chip vis-a-vis -vis their blue and white partners with Netanyahu not even showing up to the final vote. This, a day after, Gantz, who is currently Defense Minister and Alternate Prime Minister, pointedly visited the Justice Ministry, a visit not lost on this sitting Prime Minister who believes the legal establishment is out to get him. I chose to be here today on my first tour that is not part of the defense system because the Justice Ministry is the backbone of Israeli democracy. I insisted that it should be in the hands of the Blue and White Party because this ministry is the practical expression of our principle for advocating the rule of law. But perhaps even the hotter potato is Israel's plans to annex parts of the West Bank. Netanyahu and Gantz met several times in recent days in an attempt to reach an agreed outline with the Americans. Understandings are still MIA, but mutual accusations are not. When asked in the Likud Party's caucus what is the position of Blue and White on the matter, Netanyahu had this to say. I don't know exactly what Blue and White's party position is about the annexation. They might be in favor of annexing the main settlement blocks and the Jordan Valley. I haven't received any answers about the rest. Benjamin Netanyahu and Benny Gantz, until not so long ago bitter political rivals, managed to do the unthinkable, shake up the entire political landscape and join forces. But only a month into the new coalition, the differences are overshadowing what was, if at all, any common ground. And the clock once again appears to be ticking backwards to another national elections. Now to a report by Israel Hayom Daily, and it's published an article saying that Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu is going to implement a two-stage plan of annexation of parts of the West Bank and the Jordan Valley, not for what is stated in the Trump administration's peace plan. Now, that so-called deal of the century allows 30% of that territory to be annexed, but this report says that Netanyahu has other ideas. Here's Ariel Kahana, Israel Hayom's diplomatic correspondent. Netanyahu is looking for uh, changing direction, and that is what he's suggesting in the last days, is just to cut, to cut the move, to cut, to cut the action to a few steps. Uh, and the last idea which I brought this morning in, in, in our paper is that there will be two phases. The first one is to implement the Israeli sovereignty in some parts of Judea and Samaria, about 10 percent. Those 10 percent are not in Jordan Valley, are not in the famous blocks like Maale Adumim or Gush Etzion. It's not over there. Instead, Netanyahu wants to go to the, uh, let's say, to the deep inside of the West Bank, uh, to the settlements that are inside on the hills, okay, which are, let's say, out of the consensus. And he wants to begin with, with them, uh, implementing sovereignty at about 10 percent from the 30 he, he allowed by the Americans. That would be the first phase. Afterwards, 
he will once again call uh, Abu Mazen, uh, call Abbas to come and sit to the, to the table uh, for peace negotiations. And then if Abbas will come, so he will wait with the second phase of the sovereignty. If Abbas won't come, and we know that probably he won't, uh, then he will implement the rest about 20%. Uh, 20, 20 this government is very complicated. We said it from the beginning. Uh, and uh, there are a lot, of a lot of obstacles inside. They do not uh, hang one, one with, the, with each other so well. So uh, unfortunately, in my view, yes, a possibility for false elections it, it might happen. Maybe not now, maybe in a few months from now, but, uh, but it might happen, definitely, yes. Now, as relations between Jerusalem and its Arab neighbours reportedly grow closer behind the scenes, United Arab Emirates Minister of Foreign Affairs Dr Anwar Garagash says that his country and Israel can actually work together despite ongoing political differences. Now, the minister was speaking out via video link at the American Jewish Committee's annual conference, pressing for increased cooperation with Israel, but at the same time, slamming its planned annexation of parts of the West Bank. Now, the address by Garagash is seen as extremely rare, being the most senior Arab official to address one of the most prominent Jewish organisations. And I think, you know, we can come to a point where we come to a given Israeli government. And, you know, Israeli politics is very complicated with a whole variety of opinions on where to move. Uh, to the future. And we say we disagree with you on this. We don't think it's a good idea. But at the same time, there are areas such as COVID technology and other things that we can actually work together. The UAE also wants to see continued Palestinian-Israeli negotiations. The UAE uh, is clearly against any annexation and joining me here in studio is our correspondent, Jonathan Regev. Jonathan, nice to have you back in again. Now, we've just heard those comments there from Garagash. Tell me, how likely is it that Israel can enjoy, let's say, warmer ties with these Arab nations if it still goes through with these plans to annex parts of the uh, West Bank, the Jordan Valley? It probably can't. Uh, the, the, the Gulf... Uh... Uh, not allies of Israel, but is, uh, countries that maintain a relation with Israel, at least uh, under the surface, they're, they're, they're telling Israel uh, it's, it's time to decide, either annexation or a, a better relations and normalization, some kind of normalization with uh, the Gulf uh, uh, nations. Uh, uh, basically, the, 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 those Gulf nations cannot proceed with that normalization process with Israel if Israel goes along with that process of uh, annexation. Uh, that will not mean that th it doesn't mean that that re these relations will uh, uh, disappear completely simply because of those Gulf nations, being the United Arab Emirates, being Saudi Arabia, especially, uh, they're all concerned uh, by by the same uh, issue that is concerning Israel, and that is Iran. Basically, uh, the, the the common enemy is what draws Israel and those Gulf nations together. Uh, but but the Gulf nations, as worried as they are from Iran, they cannot ignore the Palestinian issue. And if Israel goes to a unilateral process such as the annexation, it will certainly come with a price among those Gulf nations. Mm, certainly. And uh, I want to talk to you about uh, the drama within the coalition. Uh, tell me, where does the Blue and White Party uh, stand in terms of these annexation plans? I'm not sure they even know where they stand, but. Uh, um, uh, President Trump and, and the American administration have said, very, have said again and again that annexation is an Israeli decision as long as there is consensus among the Israeli government. Is there such a consensus? We do not know because we do not know exactly what the position of blue and white is, uh, whether they agree to annexation of the Jordan Valley, whether they agree to annexation of the large settlement blocks, maybe other, other places uh, within the West Bank. We're hearing from uh, reports here in the media, unconfirmed at the moment, that uh, uh, the blue, blue and white party uh, will uh, accept or authorize uh, certain annex certain certain aspects of the annexation plan clearly not the jordan valley because of the the what that could do to the peace accord with jordan and with egypt uh, everybody's waiting for some kind of an answer from the blue and white party which we've not heard yet all right well certainly never a dull day in israeli politics Absolutely. jonathan regev thank you and we do need to go out for a short break. When we get back, we'll bring you the very latest corona updates here in Israel as the death toll climbs. Stay with us.